the number one thing I get asked 90% of the time, the number one question is how much boost can the Torque Storm Supercharger make? having a blessed day today we are gonna talk about a subject that gets brought up a lot and a handful of questions that I get asked also across my social media platforms and that is gonna be superchargers boost and to pinpoint it down a little bit more we're gonna talk mainly about the torque storm supercharger but we're going to talk about boost and power and goals and before we get started guys please scroll down hit that like button thumbs up button and if you're not subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button especially if you're into mopars racing mods or just overall anything to do with cars or trucks i'm sure you'll find something on the channel that you're going to like the number one thing I get asked 90% of the time, the number one question is how much boost can the Torque Storm Supercharger make and or how much power it puts down, yada, yada, yada. So this is nothing that is hidden or not easy to find. If you go to Torque Storm's website, you will see in their supercharger descriptions depending on the uh, single kits or the twin kits you will see that they advertise a single supercharger kit to make around 750 horsepower plus now does that mean you're only going to build you're only going to be able to make 7 or 750 or 800 horsepower with a single torque storm supercharger no there's a lot more to it than just the supercharger itself the overall build or vehicle or setup the the entire package is what's going to determine how much horsepower you make or how fast your car goes down the quarter mile or truck for that matter there's more to it all right Everybody wants to know how much boost can I make? Can I make 20 PSI? Can I make 18? Can I make 15? You know, yada, yada, yada. Well, simply said, boost numbers does not matter, okay? For the majority of people, and for most builds, a boost number doesn't mean jack, okay? So... You know, whether you have a car that makes 10 PSI or a car that makes 15 PSI, the 10 PSI car can just as easily wax, gap, or just straight crush a 15 PSI car, okay? Just because this guy's got more boost pressure than this guy doesn't mean that, you know, just because the guy with the more boost is going to automatically be faster, automatically win a race. That, that's not how it works. Again, the overall package, the overall build, the whole thing is what is going to determine how the vehicle performs. For a single Torque Storm Supercharger, I can tell you right now that there is many vehicles out there making over 700 horsepower on a single kit. There's cars out there making upwards to over 800 horsepower plus on a single Supercharger kit. And it doesn't take insane boost numbers to be able to do that 
again, it goes into the whole package. You know, cam choice, other bolt-on mods, you know, converters, transmissions, gearing. There's just so much more to it than just, okay, I'm going to take a vehicle, I'm going to throw a supercharger on it, and I want 15 pounds of boost, and I want to make, you know, 900 horsepower. It's not how it's going to work. Majority of the people that is in the boost game is going to understand what I'm saying here, but if you're brand new to it and you're shopping superchargers and you are shopping between superchargers that say, okay, they can make, this one can make up to seven or 800 horsepower, this one can do 1,000 plus, this one can do 1,500 plus. So that's mainly what we're going to talk about. Now I can tell you right now that there is a huge, huge, huge difference and amount of money that you're going to invest in a vehicle that starts to get past the 700 800 horsepower range when you start getting up above that level you're going to be investing so much more money in transmissions to be able to take the power rear ends axles engine modifications to be able to take all the extra power, suspension upgrades, clutch upgrades. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. Lots and lots of extra money is going to be needed to ever go to that power range or above it. So this is where I say, what is your goal for your vehicle? What, what are you wanting to do with it? What's your goals? How do you plan to use it? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself before you even start shopping or looking for a supercharger or some or some form of boost regardless. Is this vehicle going to be your daily driver? Is this vehicle only going to be a race car and it's going to be trailered or Perhaps it's going to be a you know a, still a street legal car, but 90% of its time it's going to be sitting and it's going to be going to a racetrack. Other 10% of the time it may just sit in the driveway and be a toy. So that's what you got to decide on. Okay, do you want a do you want a daily driver? Do you want to be reliable? Do you, you know do you want to try to keep costs down? Do you want to put a ton of money? in the vehicle and upgrading transmissions, upgrading rear ends, upgrading engine parts. Okay, if this is going to be a is this going to be a daily driver slash a street strip car vehicle where you may daily this car or if you're not dailying it, you may drive this car a lot, but you're going to be driving it to the drag strip and you're gonna be racing it on the weekends. Okay, so if that's the case, what's your goals in quarter mile times or whatever it is you're doing? All right, let's come up with an idea of how fast you wanna to try to make this car. A lot of people's goals is they wanna to try to get a car, you know, down into say the 10 second range. You know, the 10, se the 10 second, 11 second range is a fun little area to be in. You know, a 10 second vehicle is going to be a very stout vehicle that can compete in a lot of different classes or racing and be able to hang with a lot of other fast vehicles out there on the roads today. Now, when you start getting faster than this 10 second mark, you're going to run into another issue you're going to start getting to power levels where you're going to have to start upgrading things to be able to take the power that you're putting on this car. Not only that, you're going to be investing more money into safety equipment to be able to even race this vehicle on the track as a lot of vehicles, or as a lot of tracks, once you start getting faster than 10 O's, They're going to start requiring you to have, say, roll cages, um, you know, like battery shutoffs, safety loops, different seat belts and or seats, you know.
you know they really start cracking down on the cars a lot more when you start when you start crossing over into that zone so then again you have to ask yourself okay is is that is that where i want to be or are you just trying to make a nice fun vehicle to drive to work go hit the track on the weekends you know be able to compete and run in lots of different race classes um, have a 10 second car 11 second car 12 second car whatever it is and that's a very very fun section to be in a 10 a 10 11 you know an 11 second a 10 second vehicle is a blast okay it's gonna compete it's gonna be able to hold its own out there on the road for the most part and it's gonna be a fun car it's gonna be peppy it's just gonna be a fun car overall And you'll be in that power range, you know, for instance, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to use like, like say, let's say a Hellcat, all right? You know, most of your bone stock Hellcats are going to get out there to the track, majority of them that I see, and they're going to be out there running, you know, mid, deep 11s, uh, better drivers may be cracking off some, you know, some, some 10s, mid 10s, somewhere in there, if they're, if they're running on a tire per se, and that's pretty cool. I mean, if you got, say, a 5.7 or a 392 car um, or whatever, and you can throw, you know, a little supercharger on it, go out there and run 10s and 11s and be able to hang with these guys and compete and kind of make it like a driver's race, you know, it's going to be whoever gets out of the hole first, gets better traction, you know, who has the better setup overall, like I said, not necessarily who has the most boost or the most horsepower, whoever has the best setup, that's who's going to win the race on a drag strip, all right, I see it time and time again, I've done it to many, many, many people, myself, uh, incredible Hemi, a lot of you guys follow his, his channel as well with his truck, you know, me and him is not making tons of horsepower, guys, by no means, but our truck's 60 foot, they hook up, they go and I can tell you right now unless you have a super significantly faster vehicle and you sleep at the light or you spin a little bit or something with a car that makes a little more power you got no shot we're, we're already gonna be at the finish line before you started making up for that big mile an hour so Again, it comes in the setup. But what I'm getting at, guys, is you may not need a $10,000 supercharger, okay? Why do you need a $10,000 supercharger that says it can make 1,000 or 1,500 horsepower or whatever if you're never going to use it? And this goes to the question I asked, what are you gonna do with this car? Are you gonna build it, make 1500 horsepower and drive it to work and expect it all to you know, be hunky-dory? Negative Ghost Rider. That may work out for a little while, but a vehicle like that, you're gonna be putting wrenches on it almost every day. And it's not gonna be very street comfortable. You start getting over to that zone and that's when you're starting to creep into the trailer queens. You're starting to creep into this is a weekend toy. This is a race car. That sort of thing. So again, unless you ever plan on going to that that far with it, or you're trying to go, you know, past tens um, or something like that, you don't need a ten, twelve thousand dollar supercharger. You just don't need it. You can make plenty of horsepower on a single supercharger from Torque Storm, running a decent, reliable amount of boost. Build a setup that works, a suspension system that works, and have a very reliable daily car. Go to the track car, go out there and compete, you know, with out of the box fast cars, Hellcats, ZL1s you know, scat packs, whatever, and save a bunch of money doing it.
biggest thing I'm saying is don't get tied up in the boost numbers. Don't tell yourself you need 18 PSI boost or I want 20 PSI boost. I, I don't I don't get why people's you know they 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 look at that number. I don't I, I don't know. Maybe they feel like they're in the cool club because the car makes a whole bunch of boost, but it it it's a turd. It goes down the track as a turd. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand, you know, get out of the boost numbers. Look at look at your goals, look at your vehicle, look at what you're wanting to do with this thing. And uh and build it for what you want. You don't have like again, you don't have to have gobs and gobs of boost. And one thing's for sure, anytime you can make more horsepower on less boost, that's a win-win and much better overall for everything. So look at it like that. You know, I've seen dyno videos before where uh, people start out with, say, a boost setup on a dyno with a particular engine or whatnot, and, you know, they're testing camshafts or whatever, and per se on this camshaft, maybe they, they, they spiked out or they peaked out at, like, 18 pounds of boost they tried a different camshaft maybe with a little less overlap or whatever and then they noticed boost pressure peak dropped down to say 15 psi but the car picked up 50 horsepower across the board so you're gonna argue with that lower boost more horsepower because they changed something that was better that was overall better for the engine the engine liked it better than having more boost so that's where I say again don't get tied up thinking that you have to have as much boost as this guy down the street or whatever build what you want build what you like build what's gonna work for you and your budget that's all that matters and for many of you guys that follow the channel, all right, my truck, Frostbite, that's a 2011 Ram RT regular cab pickup truck. All right, I'm going to go over it real quick for you guys. And we are, I mean, literally, we're like a fart away. Or I could, I mean, the, I could have threw the owner's manual out of the glove box going down the track the other day and we would have went into the tents. That's how close we are. I just gotta get the time to get down to the track and just make it happen. Um, but my truck, all right, we ran the other day an 11008 at 121 miles an hour. All right, this is a pickup truck. Full weight, full interior. I had seats in the truck, granted I do have racing seats, so they're lighter seats, but I have full interior door panels, carpet, uh, radios or excuse me the radios in the truck the speakers door speakers the stereo system headliner everything's in the truck this is a 100% drive it down to the grocery store vehicle granted we're on tires we got skinnies up front we got uh, drag radials in the back we got a very good working uh, suspension setup right now on the truck but we have a stock block 5.7 Hemi with stock pistons, stock rods, stock crankshaft, stock heads, stock throttle body, all right, stock engine. We are running the Holly High Ram intake manifold on it with a single torque storm supercharger, intercooled. I'm running meth injection. We're running uh, MS-109 fuel. I don't make a whole bunch of boost, mainly because I'm, we're trying to keep it somewhat mellow because it is a stock block 5.7 Hemi. And we all know the pistons and the Hemis are not good. And I have been racing this truck for over two years now. One year we raced it on nitrous. This whole entire year we've been racing it on boost now, just a supercharger. and. The engine just keeps holding on. I mean, it just keeps holding on. But that goes into tuning, fueling, um, the setup, everything. It, it all works as a package. But so we have a we have a four thousand pound plus 
pickup truck that is pretty much a 10 second truck now. The amount of boost that we're peaking, if I look at one of my data logs on that fast, on the fastest pass that we just ran, we peaked over just slightly over 10 pounds of boost. And yeah, some of you guys are gonna be like, that's a lot of boost on a stock Hemi. It, and it is, you know, eight PSI is kind of like the, the golden zone. Um, so there's no doubt we are crossing that line and I fully understand that and I understand the, the uh, consequences if, if something happens um, and again that's what you know that's why we're we're trying to blanket it as much as we can with good fuel uh, meth injection and tuning and that's that's what it that's you know that's what's working right now I'm trying to I'm trying to run the fastest time I can this year on a stock block 5.7 engine uh, before we upgrade internals or we do a stroker or something like that. That's my goals. But what I'm getting at, guys, is, you know, we're running pretty stupid numbers in a pickup truck with not a lot of boost, a single supercharger from Torque Storm, and, uh, you know, hell, we're, we're popping the tires off the ground now on the, on the launches. Now, a lot of that has to go with the transmission we got from John Cope with the trans brake and everything, but moral of what I'm saying, guys, is the single supercharger has more than enough oomph to get you to the tens and then some, all right? These 800 plus horsepower cars running single superchargers, um, there's one car that's made, I believe it's in the mid 800 horsepower range on a single supercharger. And this car is running, a, I wanna say a mid to high eight second quarter mile time right now on a single supercharger. So again, not a 10 or $12,000 supercharger and 20 pounds of boost. They're doing it on one supercharger with a good setup overall and they're running eight second quarter mile times. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys out and uh, gives you a little understanding of, you know, what works, um, what you may need or actually need or what you could expect kind of thing. Um, but again, guys, it, 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 the million dollar question comes down to you and what you want this vehicle to do and what you expect out of it. I'm not telling you what to buy or what not to buy. I'm telling you what's worked for me. For these guys that are hunting boost numbers and, and big horsepower, okay? A lot of people don't know, but Torque Storm does offer a twin supercharger kit for majority of the vehicles out there right now. Um, an engine platform, so the twin kits are capable of going, you know, over the 14, 1500 horsepower zone and easily over, you know, easily up to the 20 and over 20 PSI capabilities. There's people out there making pretty stupid power on twin kits and the biggest kicker overall is a twin kit from Torque Storm guys all is still is still cheaper than a lot of the race version other brand superchargers a twin kit i believe is still around the six to sixty five hundred dollar zone um i know they're under seven thousand for a twin supercharger kit that you could make stupid stupid amount of power and boost with um if that's your goals you're building an all-out go-getter go crush some feelings you know, race car, trailer queen, toy, whatever you want to call it. The twin kit's definitely going to get you way down there in quarter mile times for sure. And uh, definitely, if you know, if you're in the dinos and dino numbers and all that stuff, you know, definitely put a big number up on the dino for you. So that's another option. Um, you know, you can get a twin kit. 
make a bunch of stupid power, make a bunch of boost, and still save a bunch of money compared to other brands out there. Now, the, uh, the other thing to consider too, guys, is all the Torque Storm Supercharger setups come eight rib drive, which means you get an eight rib drive belt and pulleys. And all of that comes standard. No, you know, no special upgrades needed, no extra fees. That is how they come out of the box. They're already eight rib drive. No other, no other supercharger out there right now that you can bolt on a Hemi. All right, as far as I know, or pretty much any other platform, do they come eight rib? They all come six rib. Majority of all of them come six rib, except for the Hellcats. Now, we're not talking about that. That's a factory supercharger, whatever. But like your Whipples, your Pro Chargers, your Vortex, they are all six rib drive for the cheaper supercharger setups that are gonna run you around that six to seven-ish thousand dollar range, you're gonna get a six rib drive setup that even on low boost, you're gonna be slipping belts, you're gonna be probably tearing up belts, or they're not gonna be lasting, you're gonna have issues, especially when you start to try to turn it up and make more boost, they're gonna slip. Um, now there's ways to fix that. There's people changing pulleys, um, putting on these, you know, these special coated pulleys that tries to grip the belt better, or they're cranking down these tensioners to the point where the, the belts are, um, you know, you're just loading it down really bad to try to keep the belt from slipping. And even then they still slip. And that is where the torque storm is far superior over everything else because of the eight rib drive setup standard. Um, I have not experienced any belt slip on my truck at all or on Project Storm that we've built, nor have I had to replace a belt yet. Now keep in mind, I've raced my truck now for well over a year and a half on the supercharger. We're still on belt one, all right? And belt one looks brand new. No, no tearing, no nicks, no burning, looks like a brand new belt. Absolutely flawless. The other superchargers out there, you can upgrade them. You can upgrade to, they do have, uh, most of them have an eight rib drive set up. Um, add on, it's a lot of extra money, really jacks the price up. Um, and then you have cogged pulley setups that is even more sky high, but does offer zero belt slip. And for the most part, that is for guys making tremendous amount of power usually and lots and lots of boost. So if this is going to be a daily or weekend warrior, that's, you know, we're really not even going to get into that situation. But for the amount of money you pay for a Torque Storm, you're getting the product built here in the U.S. They pretty much make absolutely everything for the supercharger in their own facility. So they have their hands on pretty much the entire package. They don't have to really worry about a middleman or anything like that. They are making their own product here in the States. And it is super, super, super quality. If you guys have not checked out some of the unboxing videos I've done on the Supercharger, go check them out. The, the craftsmanship, the materials, the product overall, the design, Everything is just beautiful, flawless, made perfectly, machined perfectly. And again, they make they make like 98% of it themselves. They make the supercharger, they make the pulleys, they make the blow-off valve, they make the brackets. About the only thing they're not making is the belt, the air filter they send you, um, the hardware bolts and nuts and stuff like that but the rest of it they're machining they're making this this is their dilly and uh all i can say is the quality is right there that's all i can say super duper i love mine 
it has done nothing but perform well for me i am more than happy with where it's gotten the truck today and i know we still have lots more room we could grow with that supercharger and go even faster um and if we ever really wanted to get insanely stupid with it we could always throw another supercharger on the other side and run a twin kit and just completely be insane like the truck would be insane the other thing i want to mention too is you know the staff at torque storm is just is just awesome um chris and chris and those guys are definitely jam up um every time i've been to an event they're you know they're cool to talk to cool to hang out with they're all car guys almost everybody there had one of their superchargers on their cars um and or they're racing their cars or taking them to events and you know enjoying them playing with them whatnot um so they're car people you know they get they get what we're trying to do and uh they make a dang good product is all i can say so again not trying to tell you guys what to buy what not to buy just trying to inform you and educate you on what the torque storm supercharger is what you could pretty much expect out of it and uh what it can do for you so definitely give them a shot give them a read you know go check out the website look into them go check out some forums um check out some of my videos i have plenty of racing videos and installs on the torque storm this isn't a pop-up company that just like popped up all of a sudden and said we're gonna make a supercharger they've been out for a while um, there's plenty of cars and trucks out there using them tons of builds out there plenty of data to look into so again it all comes down to you guys what do you want out of your car what do you expect out of the car what do you want out of the build how fast do you want to go? Is this a daily? Is this a race car? Um, answer those questions first and then look into what may work for you. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more cool stuff coming up in the future. And as always, stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys on the next one.